anybody here travel more than 2,000 kilometers to come to TEDx Abbotsford today? Okay, well, I'm going to introduce you to a little guy that did travel more than 2,000 miles. Thank you, Tim. And here he is. This little guy traveled all the way from Southern California to be here with us today. Isn't that just fantastic? Now, he, he's, he's had a rough week of travel, though. It hasn't been easy, if I'm being honest. He started out in a farmer's field and then went into a crate, went onto a skid, had a little tractor ride to a little warehouse on another truck, to another warehouse on another truck, all the way up to the border. No trouble getting across. He has Nexus straight through to a Canadian warehouse, went on another truck, and then finally to the, to the lovely retail shop where I walked by and I couldn't resist. I mean, how could you resist? Look at that face. Besides a horrible week of travel, and if I'm honest, he probably looked a little perkier when he was a little younger, although we all did, didn't we? <laughs> he probably looked a little better, um, but it, it took a lot to get him here. Yeah. One of the things it took, besides a lot of diesel fuel, is it took a lot of water to bring this little guy into existence. Any, any guesses as to how much water it takes to make a head of lettuce like this? Any, any thoughts at all? Well, I'm going to cut to the punchline. It, it's 26 liters of water for one, for one of these guys. That's actually quite a bit, isn't it? The other thing that it takes a lot of is, is this stuff. So, um, pesticides. Have you ever read the side of a bottle of pesticide? It has a lot of interesting warnings and health warnings. The most interesting one to me was, was that you should wash your hands. If, if you've used pesticide, you should wash your hands before going to the bathroom. So with that lovely thought, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure why, so it took a lot of diesel, a lot of water, and a lot of pesticides to, uh, to get him here, but, but what does that really matter? Well, our mothers told us to eat our greens, and we as good Canadians do. In fact, we import as a country 200,000 metric tons of lettuce every year into Canada. Any idea how much 200,000 metric tons of lettuce is, what that looks like? It's about a billion of these, to give you an idea. That's a lot. So we, we have a lot, a lot of lettuce available to us because we eat about 65 heads of lettuce a year. And I know you're all beginning to salivate, so I'm just going to cut this guy up. There we are. Let's get him ready to eat, shall we? Now we have to cut off the bottom bit because it's really too hard and sort of woody to, to eat. Try not to murder anybody while I'm up here. Now, the, these outside bits are just a little bit nasty, so we'll just sort of put these here. And I just got this yesterday, but it's this bit here. Yeah. So this is about the amount that we have that we can eat. So we'd wash this up and get the pesticide off of it uh, and, and then begin to eat it. It's actually a lot of waste, isn't it? But interestingly, this little guy is actually the lucky one. A lot of his friends didn't make it on the journey. When they went to harvest all of him and his friends, some of them just didn't look good enough, so they just left him in the field. And then some of them, when they got to that second warehouse, they didn't look quite good enough, so they just tossed them into the compost. And then when they finally got to the retailer, if they didn't look quite good enough to go on the shelf, then they got tossed in the compost as well. And of course, we have to come and buy these things within a couple days, or of course, it's just going into the compost as well. It's an enormous amount of waste for a little bit of salad, isn't it? You see, the, the, the real point and the topic that, that, that I have today, salads don't collect travel points, the reason is they don't like to travel. They need to be eaten where they're grown. You see, lettuce, as soon as you harvest it and cut that root off, it begins to decay. It's a very thin leaf, it's mostly water weight, and so as soon as you harvest it, it begins to shed its water, and it just doesn't last very long. Of all the things that we eat, this needs to be grown where we live. 
And thankfully now, the technology exists to make that happen. And that's what I want to share with you today. So just like a half a century ago, greenhouse technology really took off around the world. And it changed how a slice of produce in the world is grown. And now we can have peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes. We can have them 12 months a year, and they can be grown much nearer where population centers are. Well, we've got new technology now that lets us do that with leafy greens, but they can be done anywhere on earth, hot climates, cold climates. It can be done cost-effectively near where people live. So no longer does salad or lettuce have to be um, shipped all over the place. Let me show it to you. If it looks like a shipping container, it's because it is. And this is a technology that was invented only 20 miles away at Bevo Farms in Langley, a very large greenhouse, in fact. This is what the inside of it looks. You'll see uh, at the top, there's a, a big row of LED lights, and inside is a machine, a conveyor belt that has hundreds of trays that hold thousands of heads of lettuce that move the produce throughout. And every two weeks, you can harvest 4,000 heads of lettuce. Just going to show you sort of an expanded view of it here, for those of you that like technical drawings. Kind of cool. Now this is uh, a dozen of them inside a, uh, an environmentally controlled warehouse. Here you can sort of see the side, the rows of light at the top. The trays are moving up to the light and away from the light. And it takes about an hour and a half to bring a, a whole tray of produce from the back to the front. So you can actually stand at the front of the machine, do all the harvesting, all the planting. So it's physically easy work. Now, isn't that ridiculously good-looking lettuce? And don't I look ridiculous in a hairnet? <laughs> I want you to notice that right there. So the good news is, is that we can grow produce locally, but why does that matter? Well, the local part obviously matters a lot. We don't have to ship these things all over the place anymore. But there's, there's several other enormous benefits to growing these things locally. One of the first is that it only actually takes about one liter of water to grow a head of lettuce in a cubic farm, much, much less. And because it's grown in a clean, contained environment, there's no pests, so you don't need any pesticide. And here's what a tray of produce looks like, very similar to what you just saw in that video. This is one week old, this lettuce. Another week from now, it'll be a single size serving head, just like you saw in that short video. Why is it important to be a single size serving of lettuce that you grow and eat? You can see the enormous amount of waste that you end up having when you grow such a large head. The bottom several inches are too hard to eat. It's, ined it's, it's inedible, and we need to throw it away. The outside leaves are always getting a little bit ratty. So when we grow single serving size heads, you eat the whole thing. You're able to cut the root off, put the whole thing on the plate, dress it up, not chop it up, don't have to wash it, it's clean and ready to go. The other thing you notice is that the root stays on until you go to eat that produce, and that's crucial. As soon as you cut those roots off, that lettuce begins to decay, and it, it, it starts to die. It will last for weeks in the fridge if you leave that root on and in a nice little container. This is a picture of a dozen of them. It almost kind of looks like a greenhouse, doesn't it? So here we have clean lettuce locally grown one cubic farm, one eight foot wide by 40 foot long cubic farm, can produce the same amount of produce as an acre of field farming. Enormous amount of productivity in a very small amount of space. And do it 12 months a year and do it anywhere on earth. Hottest climates, coldest climates, it really doesn't matter. But why does this matter? Let's say you don't care that it takes a lot of diesel to get your lettuce to you. Let's say it doesn't matter how much fresh California water is used to make your lettuce, you, you don't really mind. And maybe you enjoy pesticides on your salad. I mean, so let's say you don't care about any of that. 
there are two things you should care about. One, this lettuce is delicious. When it's locally grown and that root is on, it is still alive. It tastes fantastic. Remember when you were a kid and you'd go out to the garden and you'd pick a, a carrot out and you'd rinse it off with the hose and eat it and it just tastes so much better because it's fresh, it's alive, it's just vibrant. The other thing that you should care about is the nutritional value. As soon as a head of lettuce is, is harvested, it does begin to lose its nutritional value. If you're eating something with the root on that is still alive, it retains all that wonderful nutritional value. So between the taste and the nutrition, great reasons to grow produce locally. And now the technology exists where it can be done cost-effectively. And that's very important. It's nice to be able to do all of this locally, but if it's too expensive, then nobody can access it. But it can be done at very similar prices to any other kind of farming for lettuce. So, we have new technology. It's going to let us grow leafy greens, all sorts of leafy greens locally, herbs, microgreens, lettuces. But what can we do? I think we should go into our grocer and we should ask, could you get produce for us that's grown locally 12 months a year? And could you get it and assure us that it's, it's using as little fresh water as possible? The world's running out of fresh water. We need to preserve it. And could we have it grown in a clean environment so we don't have pesticides along with our salad? And could we grow it in a single serving size so we don't have to throw so much of it away? And could we have it with the root still on so that it'll stay alive in my fridge for more than a day? Wouldn't it be wonderful to have lettuce that lasts for weeks in your fridge? Well, this does. So, one thing to say. Lettuce, anyone? <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs>